And here we go. Welcome to the Great Work Insights Podcast by the OC Tanner Institute, the show that features the people, the professionals, the thought leaders, and the coolest companies. And now your host, the man navigating the discussion about the culture, the organized chaos, and the best practices that compel great work, Todd Nordstrom. Have you ever had an idea that you think could change the world for the better? Well, most of us have. We've had those those big ideas where we come up with an invention or a new process or something that we think this could be huge, right? We've all had that. But the bigger question is, is what do you do with that idea? <laughs> I, I know if you're like me, you probably put it in your pocket and you think someday, 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 and then someday comes and somebody else pulls off your idea before you even attempt at the creation of it. Um, it, Maybe you're thinking big innovations. Maybe you're thinking simplicity. Uh, Maybe you're thinking, I didn't have the engineering skills or the capital or, or whatever to pull off my idea. And not all ideas are necessarily, you know, huge inventions. Consider for a second these items, a toilet paper roll, a milk carton, or maybe even a shoebox. Can these simple items change the world? They aren't items that we typically um, consider to on the list of brilliant innovations. In fact, these are items that typically wander through our lives unnoticed. Well, of course, unless we don't have them. They're items that very briefly add value to our lives and then end up in the recycling bin or even in the trash. But what if you could change the world with a roll of toilet paper. Is it possible? Okay, so maybe it's not toilet paper, but consider this story. Chloe Harwell, a two-year-old from Phoenix, Arizona, has a vivid imagination, and she also has a propensity to stick her fingers where they don't necessarily belong in the recycling bin, which generates an idea for her mom. Of course, any of you that are parents worldwide are no strangers to this phenomenon. A a child's odd curiosity with packaging, it just is. Most parents have joked during birthday parties or at holidays that their kids enjoy the box more than the gift itself. But to Janet Harwell, Chloe's mom, the recycling bin acting as a toy box spawned an idea. Harwell, a graphic designer, spent her weekend designing stickers that turned ordinary recyclables into rocket ships and pianos and fire trucks, all kinds of cool toys that, with enough bumps and bruises, could at some point return right back into the recycling bin. An idea was born. The question was, could box play for kids, the business, be born? But is building a business from scratch really that easy? Taking an idea as simple that, like Harwell's and and turning it into a business. Our guest today is one of those people that loves new ideas, ideas that could become businesses, and ideas that could change the world. In fact, our guest today loves ideas that could change the world so much that she has created a company that helps ideas get off the ground. Her company is called SeedSpot. And what you're about to hear may inspire you to let your entrepreneurial spirit soar both inside and outside of your so-called day job. Please welcome to the show, Courtney Klein, CEO of SeedSpot, a company that will soon be changing the world wherever you live. Courtney, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, I want to talk about ideas with you because I've talked with you before about ideas and I just love your approach. We all have ideas, but we don't always know what to do with them. Tell the listeners today what SeedSpot is. Yeah, SeedSpot, we are a nonprofit organization, and really the catalyst and genesis even for the name itself was that we all have the seed of an idea within us, but where do you go? Where's the spot that you go to to grow that idea? And so SeedSpot has been around now for several years working with entrepreneurs that are building a product, a service, or a technology that improves lives or makes the world a better place. And so we have an educational curriculum that we coach these entrepreneurs through the process of what it takes to go from a back of a napkin idea all the way to a scalable business. We surround them with mentors, provide them with office space, provide them with capital opportunities and funding, all of the resources that an entrepreneur may need to take that brilliant idea and make it real. 
Okay, so I have I have a question because you're the the business mind behind all this. You're the founder of Seedspot, but you weren't necessarily the person saying, "I want to create something. I want to invent something. I have an idea." Your idea is Seedspot. Where did this idea come from? It's a great question. Uh, it really generated. I was a senior at Arizona State University and thought I was going to go into broadcast journalism, mm -hmm. but had a pretty transformational experience uh, traveling to the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico uh, and seeing how the rest of the world actually lived. And I left that uh, experience a little bit disillusioned by the fact that no one was really empowering and educating the next generation of young people to tackle real-world problems. And so I started a nonprofit my senior year at the university and led an organization um, for seven years that followed. And out of that experience and really trying to empower the next generation of young people to recognize that there are problems and there are solutions, should you be courageous enough to pursue them, um, I was surrounded myself with mentors and people that believed in me and invested and supported and rallied and opened up doors. And because of that, the organization was successful. And so I recognized as an entrepreneur when I transitioned from that organization that not a lot of other people that have ideas have that same type of support system. Um, I was thankful to have that through the university. And I wanted to create a place that other entrepreneurs could go to to receive that same type of support and community and really people that believed in them. And so Seed Spot was born for that reason, to build the community that would support those dreamers. I love that. Dreamers uh, with big ideas to change the world. But when you talk about people solving the world's problems, to for the listeners, what's the difference between social programs and what you're doing, which is social entrepreneurialism? Yeah, I mean, I think the distinction is really social programs tend to be a handout, not a hand up. And mm -hmm. I think social entrepreneurs look at problems in the lens of really attacking the root cause of a problem and getting to the bottom of what's actually causing the problem in the first place and then building a sustainable solution around that. So it's not necessarily a, a charitable model or a philanthropic model. Many social entrepreneurs run for-profit companies that are both profitable and create a real impact in the world. So there has to be, I mean, for SeedSpot, for a, an idea to, you know, to start, to come to SeedSpot, to, 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 to get your, your curriculum, to go through the whole program, you must have some sort of criteria of what social entrepreneurialism means. I mean, can I, can I create a, you know, a new hat and bring it to you that does it, what kind of criteria or a popsicle or whatever I come up with for my, you know, crazy idea, how does it, how, what's the criteria for getting into seed spot? Uh, we developed a social impact scale to really determine whether or not a venture is the right fit for SeedSpot. And first and foremost, we look for the need. You know, has the entrepreneur really found a need in the world that needs to be solved? And is that problem painful enough that the community or the individuals that it affects are willing to pay for by a solution? And we do a lot around kind of that customer discovery process. Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing to have a brilliant idea. It's another thing to recognize and, and find if other people feel like that's a real problem to be solved and if they're willing to buy or pay for the solution. Um, and then we go down that scale. You know, is it innovative? Has it been done before? Is it a Band-Aid for a problem? Or is it really attacking the root cause of the issue? What's a, give me an example. What do you mean by a Band-Aid? So a band-aid would be something like, um, you know, junk removal from a community. Um, where's the junk really going? Um, why did it accumulate in the first place? Um, what is it about that that you can really track back to? It's not just a matter of, you know, replacing and moving the junk from one pile to the next or cleaning up trash. It's getting to the root cause of why is the trash accumulating in the first place? And can we do something further back in the supply chain to remedy that? Uh, similarly, if you're, you know, feeding the homeless, an incredibly worthy cause that needs to be done, but what is it about job creation or what is it about the individuals that are in need of food on the streets? How can we empower them to rise out of that situation themselves? And so we look for things that aren't just a one-time, you know, band-aid to place on the issue, but how do we get a little bit deeper to the root cause and start to drill down an idea that can solve that? That's fascinating because I think so many of us, like the example of junk removal, I think so many of us just kind of have grown up and believe, well, it's gone and we don't ever ask, where is it going, you know, and why is it, why is it here in the first place? And then how many junk piles are just being moved to other junk piles? That's interesting stuff. Um, so let's say that an entrepreneur meets all of these criteria that you just spoke of. 
Um, they've got a good shot at becoming incubated by seed spot. What, how does that process work? So we have an open application process. Uh, it's a simple web form that folks fill out first on our website, and then we get into interviewing, and we really get to know the entrepreneurs themselves. It's it's not easy to be an entrepreneur. Um, you got to have a little bit of grit and a really high tolerance for risk. And so we look for the entrepreneurs that are willing to take that initial step. It doesn't have to be the jump off the cliff, but the initial step off the cliff with us and trust us and feel that we can be their best resource for them. And we're not a fit for every entrepreneur, nor is every entrepreneur a fit for us. And so through the interview process, we really look for that alignment, both around the culture and appetite of the entrepreneur, as well as how we can best support them. Different line of thinking here. A lot of the listeners to this show are working for large organizations, real you know, corporate America type stuff. And one of the hot topics in corporate America is obviously millennials. It, is social entrepreneurialism, is this a millennial thing? Talk about what you're seeing as far as who's coming to you, who's, who's you know, coming up with these big ideas. Is, it, is this just for young people or is this something that we can all do? Everyone can be a social entrepreneur if they aspire to be. I think that we've seen at SeedSpot entrepreneurs from the age of high school age all the way to our oldest entrepreneur was 82 years old. And wow. was a true inspiration to all of us. Um, and, and with that, I think we've seen a very wide spectrum of entrepreneurs that have come through the doors at SeedSpot. And even inside corporations, some people that have come from inside corporations and participated in one of our programs that they may have an innovation that they can take back to their company to make that company stronger and better um, and more nimble and, and more adept at solving issues in the world. And so we've seen a wide spectrum. I think the generational you know, trend on the trajectory, certainly millennials do want to and express interest in working for companies that align with their values that are doing good in the world. And so I think there's an appetite and a real hunger for you know, a universal application of social entrepreneurship and how we collectively address these problems, be it individually at a young age individually at an old age or inside of an institution. You mentioned high school. I, you, SeedSpot actually offers an incubator program for high school kids as well, right? Talk about that. We do. Uh, we recently took our adult curriculum and modified it just slightly, really uh, not very much at all to the high school audience. And we have a, a train-the-trainer model now. So we work with schools and teachers that are interested in teaching social entrepreneurship as a core class. It is actually embedded on the high school campus as a class. It is an elective course, not an after-school program. Um, and part of our thinking is to really change the way that public education, private education, charter schools, Montessori, you name it, start to educate students to become aware of their own power and authority to create change in the world. And so we have a curriculum, online teacher training tools. We do uh, biannual teacher training for those that are actually on the ground teaching this course. And then we culminate all of the students from soon around the country uh, to a demo day where the students actually pitch their ideas to a live community audience. And we give out money and prizes and things that really incentivize these students to be, become serious about launching their ventures. And really the end game for the high school program is not necessarily that those ventures become wildly successful, but that the young people start to see themselves as agents of change and that they have the tools to become social entrepreneurs in whatever career path they pursue down the line. That's interesting. I, I just have a, like a big a philosophical question for you because you're, you're working with these social entrepreneurs um, every day. Do you think overall, whether it's any generation or whomever, why... Why is social, social consciousness becoming more of a focus today than, let's say, 20 years ago or 15 years ago? Why, why, why now? I'm certainly no expert on it, but my inclination is that with the influx of media and accessibility of information, mm -hmm. you know, the world is seeing things in a much different light, and I think we all feel this whether we recognize it or not, there's not in our stomach that justifies this, this isn't right. And what's happening in news headlines or what's happening in the world, it's not right. And I think it takes the right temperament of the right people. And I hope it infiltrates through all of us one day that, that we all feel this sense of responsibility to step up and take action. And so I do think it's because of the influx of information and the way that the world has become so globalized. And I think in particular, the next generation is a little bit more sensitive and savvy to the world that they're inheriting yeah. and that they have to do something about it now. Maybe, maybe yesterday's actions are finally catching up with us, right? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, let me pr- pick your brain for a second. For the listener of this show who might be, they might be working in a cubicle or they might believe that their job is boring or they might believe that, um, or maybe they just can't digest the idea that their ideas can change the world. Uh, maybe they work for a large company or their role is to, I don't know, sell video games or make Chinese food or market cars or just increase productivity. What's your advice to the person who might not believe their ideas could change the world? Mm-hmm. I would say to them that you're wrong, um, <laughs> that your ideas can. And I think as we look a- across the landscape for you know, we blame governments, we blame institutions, we blame borders and boundaries. And when you break all that down at the end of the day, so many of the world's problems are, are caused by people. Mm-hmm. And therefore, they have to be solved by people. And so thinking that you don't have the authority or the experience or the time, whatever it may be, whatever excuse you know, you've given, um, I, I call BS on that. I think that we all have to step up and we all have to be brave and bold and I think it really comes to a point in time that you you found a problem that's painful enough that bothers you enough that keeps you up enough at night however large or small and that's the idea that you have to pursue the one that you can't quite let go of hey absolutely I've known you for a couple years now and I absolutely love what seed spot is doing and I love some of the stories that you've told me Um, I just saw in the news that seed spot is expanding talk about that congratulations by the way Thank you. Yes, we just received money from uh, the Kaufman Foundation, which is an incredible institution in its own right, investing in entrepreneurs across the country um, that are doing innovative things and the nonprofits that support them. And so with that funding, we're building the infrastructure to expand seed spot into other cities. And so we're now looking for the right leaders and the right communities and the right cities where we can physically build a seed spot presence, an office, a team of people, uh, programs, demo days, all that comes with the work that we do. So, yeah, we're incredibly excited, and it was an incredible honor to receive the funding that, to do so. That's so exciting. If, if listeners want to learn more, because maybe there is someone out there listening right now that's saying, w- I want this in my community. Where do I where do I learn more about Seed Spot? Where do I learn about the companies you've helped, the curriculum you offer? Where do I go? You can log on to seedspot.org. Uh, follow us on Facebook or Twitter at Seed Spot, and uh, we do have events. And anyone that is in our area is certainly welcome to attend. But you can also catch blips of, of Demo Day. We'll be posting online the latest batch of entrepreneurs as they pitch their big dreams to the world uh, in December. Courtney Klein, CEO of Seed Spot. It is always an honor and a pleasure, and and keep up the good work. You guys are doing such great things. You're so sweet. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. What did you think of today's show? The conversation continues on www.octanner.com. Be sure to leave us a comment. Also, remember to rate, review, and subscribe to all our podcasts on iTunes. Now get out there and build something beautiful. It's your turn now.